What's up, guys? Thank you for tuning in to the Uncommon Mindset podcast. Today, I'm joined by the incredible Mike Davis. I'll just give you a brief background on who he is. Mike Beast Boy Davis is an American professional mixed martial artist competing in the lightweight division of the biggest organization in the world, the UFC. Mike has a professional record of nine wins and only two losses. He even went out to Thailand to compete in the Tiger Muay Thai trials and won. He fights out of American top team uh, where there are other incredible athletes such as Dustin Poirier, Jorge Masvidal and more. Mike is currently on a winning streak in the UFC and the future for this young beast is definitely bright. I'm super excited to be joined by you today, Mike. (laughs) What a what an introduction! Thank you. Yeah, no worries, that's fine. Um, I just want to take it back, Mike. Uh, I want to ask you, like, when and why did you get into mixed martial arts? Oh, uh, that was a uh, sort of a thing that happened when I was little. I got picked on for being super small, and with that, I took up boxing as a sort of self defense. Mm-hmm. And with boxing, I did wrestling simultaneously. Um, while in high school and then found a gym that was kind of they were learning mixed martial arts on YouTube so I watch YouTube videos and learn how to do like arm bars and triangles and I liked it because it was wrestling and boxing at the same time I just stuck with it that's amazing no that's brilliant and what why was it that you went out to to Thailand to do the the uh the trials I'm sorry uh, why was it that you went out to to Thailand to do the trials? Oh, um, my God, Tiger Muay Thai has a big reputation. And uh, after my my fight with Gilbert Burns, uh, one of my friends was out there, and he said that they do this try tryout thing to come and train here for a year. So I decided I would. Um, when he messaged me, he said you should apply, and it was already past the deadline. It was like two weeks past deadline for applications, but I still put it in, mm-hmm. and somehow, some way, I got it. That's brilliant. And you actually, you actually won, right? Yeah. Well, we had like, like 10 picks, but I was the number one pick. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I actually, I watched the the whole thing on YouTube and it was, it was crazy to watch. It was really, really fun. It was exciting. It was so much fun over there. Yeah. It looked really intense. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So basically um, I know that obviously you're, your latest fight was against Mason Jones, who I really like Mason and I've actually done a podcast with him as well. Um, you know, I really think that he's a, he's a phenomenal fighter and the fight that you guys had were, were incredible. You know, you both obviously won 50 K. What really fascinated me was after the fight where you got interviewed and, you know, you got a bit emotional and, um, you mentioned that obviously 2020 was a tough year for you and you went through injuries and sickness and you know financial struggles how does how do like how do you overcome stuff like that like tough situations uh i have been through the depths of hell honestly and to come out on top it just lets me it's 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 been a a continuous thing it happens all the time and i just learned that everything in the universe kind of happens for a reason and as it does, I noticed that everything was given to me when I was supposed to have it. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, how, how do you like, what's your mindset like going into, you know, going into like a fight and going into tough situations? Because I, I, I heard in one of your interviews, you mentioned that you don't get nervous when you go into a fight. Like what goes through your mind? Um, I, I train at American Top Team where, as you mentioned, is like all the champions of every organization you can think of. So when I go into that gym and I'm sparring with them and <laughs> and it's uh, 100%, like we're sparring 100%. So it's kind of like a fight every single day. And then when I get to the cage, it's just the same, literally the same. So I think of it as, as another sparring day. So it's nothing to be nervous about. Because regardless of what happens in the cage and coming home, uh, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll be just fine. So it's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'd love to uh, just be like a fly on the wall in American Top Team, yeah. <laughs> just see what yeah. happens. There. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting gym. There's a lot of wars that go on. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, what are your, what are your goals at the moment? Because uh, obviously you beat Mason now. You're on a win streak. Um, like what, what's next for you? Uh, 
I need to heal. I did break my hand in that fight. Yes. Oh, no way. Yeah, so it's definitely um, yeah. getting it corrected. I'm pretty sure it has to be set um, on Monday. Mm-hmm. And then I got some other little things that are bothering me. But once this heals, I'm going to get back. I'm hoping it only takes maybe like a month. Maybe to get back to training. Uh, I'm running now, but maybe back to full training mid-March. And then I do know that in April, they're coming down here to Miami uh, with a crowd, too, because Florida doesn't care about COVID at all. So they'll have a full crowd, and it'll be interesting. That'll be awesome. Are you looking to fight someone in, like, the, the top 10, is it? Uh, no, not yet. I don't get paid. I don't get paid enough to fight those people. Uh, I'm, just, I'm honest. I don't yeah. get paid to fight someone in the top 10. No. Maybe my second contract, depending on what the terms are for my, my pay and all that, mm-hmm. then we'll see where that goes. But right now, I'm still looking for someone on a losing streak. Whoever is about to get kicked out of the UFC, I want to fight that person. Yeah, no, that's good. It's good to have like a strategy, of course, on, you know, what you want to do with your future and stuff like that. Um, Obviously, you've, you know, I mentioned earlier, you've got nine wins and you've only got two losses, but people need to know that the two losses, you know, one is against Sadiq Youssef, who's on a winning streak, and the other one's against Gilbert Burns, who's about to fight Kamara Usman for the, for the title. You know, like, there's no, these guys are no joke, right? Um but like how, like after your loss um, against Gilbert, like how did, did you ever feel like giving up at all? What do you mean? Like, did you Uh-oh. ever feel like? No, yeah. no. Um, no. The Gilbert fight was kind of like a, a fluke. It was my entry fight. I wasn't training or anything like that. And they just kind of like, hey, no one's fighting this Gilbert Burns kid. So you can fight him and we'll give you a contract if you do. And I was like, oh, sure. <laughs> that didn't, nothing really mattered. I didn't care who it was. But now I, now I have a full contract. And yeah. I'm kind of uh, I'm killing, trying to uh, just settle myself in. Of course. Yeah. Now that the Gilbert Burns fight is out of the way, the hard fight that I had to do to get in is out of the way, I'm not going to lose. No, that's amazing. That was brilliant. Um, what's, what's been your like biggest achievement so far in life? Making it to the UFC. It has to be. Yeah. Um, it's a like a one percent of the world get to stand in that octagon. Yeah. And it's uh amazing. No, of course, no, it's amazing. And obviously, you know, you went out with um with Dustin and um you know your coach uh, Mike Brown is there, and yeah. you went out to uh, Abu Dhabi, right? And what yeah. what was that experience like uh, fighting oh, on Fight okay. Island? It was so incredible. Everyone there is so over the top with hospitality. Yeah. Uh, no matter what we wanted, we got. We just asked for something, and it would be brought right to us. Um, literally anything. They took the doors, the door hinges off to bring a, a dry sauna into one of our training rooms so we could have a dry sauna. <laughs> but they do everything. Uh, yeah. That's COVID incredible. is really serious there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they are aware of safety. They wear that hazmat suits and like paper hazmat suits. It's weird. And we get tested like four times, I think, three times while I was there. Wow, wow! Um, I I saw that in, in your in your on your Instagram. Um, when once you won the fight, you came out and they were all like just cheering. Oh, yeah. You got sat yeah, that, down. That's hospitality is insane. No, yeah. nowhere else, no hotel is gonna do that for you. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, what what's your thoughts on like on fear? So like you know when you ever do you ever get afraid of anything? Like how do you overcome fear? Uh, that's loud um with fear it's kind of i mean you're, you can either let it hold you back or you can go through it so i learned to do whatever i need to do no matter what i feel if i'm hurt if i'm tired if i'm uh scared of it just whatever it is i just have to do it because yeah. there's not going to be there's never a time where i'm going to be just 100 percent all for something there's always a, a doubt or some kind of alternative uh mindset for it yeah of course um you obviously mentioned earlier in in the podcast that you know you had a a tough time you know getting bullied and stuff growing up um do you think that's that's affected you in any way like in the present time now or has it just built you into the person you are today no it just made me the person i am today um the bullying stuff was gone it's long gone i 
I'd never been in a fight before um, outside of the outside of like a cage. And I don't know, it's just kind of still seems like it's going to be that way my whole life. I'm just, I'm too nice. I'm just a nice guy. I don't want to start trouble. I don't want to end trouble. I just stay away from me. Of course. No, that, that's the way to be, right? There's no point of, there's no point of not being nice to people, you know? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, where, where are you at the moment? Are you, I, I literally, before we came, before we came on this podcast, I went onto your Instagram and I saw you were running like just the beach, the weather's lovely. It was stone here earlier. <laughs> um, I'm in Florida. Florida, so yeah. Yes, yeah, South Florida. Amazing. Wow. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not like a beach day today. It's kind of cloudy, but it's still 70s or so outside. So it's very nice. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, who's, who would you say is like your, is your role model at the moment? for fighting in life or who was your role model like growing up who did you ever look up to um i don't know my mom your mom i've never met someone as strong as my mom so like just as a person yeah i I look up to her what what do you mean i asked her any kind of questions um she can fight so <laughs> it's, uh like financial advice any kind of advice i need i look up to her just the way she, that she handles life how she's raised four kids um yeah, she's done she's done a lot in the world and i look up to her amazing yeah and you obviously mentioned the financial side what what did you do with that that 50k <laughs> um i don't have it uh, <laughs> it takes a long time to get it takes like two months oh really yeah <laughs> Oh no way! Yeah, I didn't know that. I know he just. I know Dana just comes at the end of the the fight and just gives it to you. No. I wish. No, Dana, you wait like, literally, literally like two months, and then you'll get it in the bank. You just wake up in the morning with fifty grand in the bank. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, well um, we, we get our pay from like our our show and win money. We get that like a, the next day or two days after the fight. Yeah. I think a lot of people need to to realize as well that, you know, these mixed martial artists, they f- they're literally fighting for their lives in the cage. And the amount that they're getting paid is is not really, you know, it's not, they should be getting paid more, definitely. Like what? It's, it's terrible pay at the beginning. Um, and as you grow, you give, you dedicate years of your life to it, you start making the, the money. But yeah, at the beginning, it's, Honestly, it's uh, like working at McDonald's. Yeah. Probably, probably a little worse than working at McDonald's. Incredible. As you think about uh, the base pay when you get into the UFC is 10,000 and 10,000. 10, 10, and say you lost your fight, you'll make 10,000. You'll mm-hmm. give 15% to a management, 15, 20% to management, 30% to taxes, um, however much to your gym and whatever you're paying them, then you're left your ten thousand dollars you're left with after all that maybe like four thousand maybe you yeah. fight three times a year if you lost all three of those fights you just made twelve thousand dollars that's mcdonald's money that's crazy man that's crazy yeah no i i definitely respect anyone who gets into into an octagon like i i do mixed martial arts myself um i've i've only been training for like two years and a couple of months now um and you know, just sparring and stuff like that and getting hit, you know, it, it can take a toll on you, of course, uh, especially if you've been doing it for a while, you know, in the, in the future, of course, and these people need to be, need to be paid more definitely from what I can see from, you know, outside of the UFC, obviously. Um, I always said that. I, I feel like the UFC should be way more selective for who gets into the UFC and stop just taking these people on undefeated streets. I saw someone fight on Fight Island recently who was, like three and two, he's three and three now. But how did he get into the UFC? So I don't, I don't understand. And then uh, with the people who are in the UFC, who have deserved and earned their spot in the UFC, they should get some kind of like twenty thousand a year salary. Mm-hmm. Just every every year on January first, twenty grand bank account, and then when you fight, you get your other incentives but like, like twenty thousand is just just so we can focus on training and, and provide like better fights for the, the fans we can we don't have to try to work a full-time job and then try to train after while we're exhausted and you get a crappy fight from us yeah 
no. Um, what would you what would you recommend um, like a, a young kid now who's who wants to start MMA or just wants to do anything in life? You know, like what they uh, uh, what they like what really want to do. Like, what would you advise them? Uh, definitely get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and then some some kind of striking. I would prefer maybe Muay Thai, something with knees and elbows, mm -hmm. but. Those two together will, will are beyond enough to make it somewhere. Okay, I see. Do you and I was train I was train jujitsu more often because a lot of the people coming up now are grapplers. Yeah, they yeah. just take you down and just sub you right if you're a striker. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you do you ever do anything um, specifically for like like mind training? Like, do you ever like read books, or meditate, or anything like that? Yeah, um, we have uh, like a cognitive uh, mind coach with uh, Phil DeRue. Mm -hmm. So um, I do post some some of the stuff on my story where you'll see me like I'm touching an iPad and then a light will go over here and I'll have to touch that light. And then I'm but I'm doing like a puzzle on the iPad and in my peripherals, I'm looking for these lights, it's certain colors I could touch, touch the light. Yeah, so I do a lot of mental training. Well, that's and yeah, of course. Um, meditation kind of just getting into my own mind uh while sitting in the hotel room mm -hmm. that's just something it's kind of bad and i don't like to do it but it's it definitely gets me ready to like the nerves and the, the big feelings i have to think about what could happen and this and that all the negatives and then i got to think about all the positive and then i got to separate them hmm. i do that before a fight all the time you know when you mentioned it gets bad, do you mean like just overthinking things? Like you yeah, just you, you definitely overthink. Like with the fight with Mason Jones, I was sitting in my hotel room and um, I never looked at any of his fights. So um, what was Mike Brown? He told me to, to we're going to do MMA training and I needed to look at what my guy does and, and we need to practice whatever I want to do in the fight. Hmm. I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I haven't watched his fights. He's like, you should do that. So I watched a couple of his fights and I was like, oh, dang, this kid can fight. Like this kid's a brawler, <laughs> so yeah. like, dang, I have, a, I have a fight on my hands now. It, it ate away at me for a couple of days. Was this, we, we were stuck in the hotel room in Abu Dhabi for like a week and a half before we fought. So wow. it was a week and a half. Of, it was like four days before the fight, and I was just thinking about like he. I know that I know his game plan was to try and break me, but I'm not gonna break. It's just not mm -hmm. gonna happen. So do you I, do you know I, me? I, uh, yeah. Do you normally not watch um, like your opponent's fights, or was it just no? No. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I train every aspect of MMA. I've yeah. trained wrestling. I train boxing. I train striking. I do mental preparation, strength work, cardio. So whatever or whoever is face, I, I face whatever you throw. I'm just gonna react to it. My body naturally because I've been doing it for so long, and doing so much of it. So whoever I fight, I'm just. I'm just gonna fight. It's just it. Yeah. See who's the better fighter. Yeah. No, it was it was it was incredible to to watch that fight against Mason. Like the both of you were just you know coming forward and um. I, what would you say to the people that said that you know it was a close fight? Do you think it was a close fight when you were in there? No, I, I watched it again, um, maybe like five times mm -hmm. after I got back to the states and uh, after watching it, I was way more precise my accuracy was beyond like double his um he had a higher output but he didn't connect as you could as i was moving hmm. so uh the takedowns the yeah um pretty much just looking at the fight from my point of view you have to really if, if he was to come forward and hit and connect his punches he probably would have won like if I wasn't, if I was slow or, or he damaged one of my legs or something and I slowed down and he started connecting all those punches, he, he probably would have won. Yeah. So, but with the way I see it, um, I won every round. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I won every round. First for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I went back to the stool very, very happy with my first round. Second round, um, I watched a couple times and I did a lot of movement in that round. 
he didn't he did look like the higher aggress like the bigger aggressor but then at the end of the fight that combination uh to the head kick and then he caught which he caught and then i fell with mm -hmm. that sequence right there i think won me the round yeah and then the third round i just beyond output on him i just looked much better in the third round yeah he was starting to break he even shot on me twice in the third mm -hmm. he was starting to break mm -hmm. I you know when you watch fights like that sometimes i i get kind of like i don't know like i get butterflies like when it goes to the the judges scorecards because you really don't know what these judges are going to do and you know they're really bad sometimes they're real bad yeah like <laughs> you know especially for for the fight that you just had right like, like let's say for example let's say if you did lose that fight do you think that you would have been actually kicked out of the ufc is that why you were like so so emotional about um, that? It's, it's a fear of mine because that would mean I lost two of my four fight contract and hmm. I've seen people get kicked off for two fight losses but there's two in a row I mean I was win or lose win lose hmm. which would probably they'd end up giving me one more fight but that fight would be like everything on the line yeah. I lose that fight I'm out of the UFC yeah but now I feel secure and I feel like even if I do lose the next, I'm not going to, but even if I do lose the next fight, uh, I will get another one. Yeah, of course. There's so much pressure on, on like, you know, UFC fighters. Like, uh, when I was, when I, when I was training at Chris Reese's Academy, we had a UFC fighter, Brett Johns. Um, he fights for Bellator now. Um, yeah. He's in the bantamweight, but he, he, he was on a winning streak, right? And he lost against Pedro Munez and Algernon Sterling. And it was only those two that he lost. But his next fight, um, he, like, in his head, he was like, if I lose this fight, I'm going to be kicked out of the UFC. And, like, you could just see, like, the, all the emotions come out after the fight when he won. Like, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's so, like, it's, it touches you, you know? You're just like, wow, like. It so it's a scary fun. thought that you could, like, you dedicated your life to making it to this sport. And then uh, you gave your all. It wasn't enough. And then you get brought right back down to the bottom it's like instantly like it can happen in a day yeah it's crazy um do you do you do anything else outside of fighting like is there any other hobbies or passions that I you have, have? Play video games you play video yeah, games I play video games and watch movies that's all i do i train yeah. come home i play video games uh then i go train again then i come home uh eat a bunch of food i only eat twice a day mm -hmm. and then watch a movie fall asleep do it all over every single day and you do what you love so yeah, it's amazing <laughs> yeah, i just need to start getting paid for gaming so i'm gonna yeah start uh twitch and start building that up and have some do you have, fun. A, do you have a youtube channel no not yet i gotta do that too I yeah get on that yeah that'd be awesome yeah, YouTube, youtube twitch i gotta yeah. get on those what, what what games do you play is it like fortnite or yeah, I, I used to play Fortnite. I play Call of Duty now. Just oh, Warzone yeah. over and over and over all day long. <laughs> That's I'm a big fan of the, uh, the story games like God of War, Last of Us, mm -hmm. those kind of games. Yeah. And they're all exclusive for a PS PlayStation. So I bought a PS5 just to be sure when the new games come out, I can play them. You can play them, yeah. That's amazing. No, I think it's good to have different things outside of fighting rather than just constantly thinking about fighting when you're not in training and stuff like that because if you're not taking your mind off it you know it can it can just drain you i think it can get really repetitive right? i have a every time i go to training i train hard hmm. uh, i give my all um when i leave the gym i completely rid my my mind of fighting i just don't want to think about it i don't want to talk about it i just want to enjoy the day do video games go Go for a walk, enjoy the sun, anything but fight, because yeah. it's just it's too overwhelming to do this all day, all day long. Of course, no, that's amazing. Yeah, no, um, I won't, I won't keep you long. I, you know, obviously, um, thank you, thank you so much for for being on the podcast. It's really nice to just get to know you and you know get yeah. to speak to you about, learn more about like you and your mindset and what you do. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see what. In hopefully in April. Is it April or May? Was yeah, it? I'll be April. Hopefully in April now. Um, sorry. I'm hoping for April. Yeah. 
hopefully uh you know we get to to watch you fight in miami that'll be that'll be insane with with a crowd as well especially for a show on that'll be fun yeah for sure um what i'll do guys i'll leave um uh, mike's social media down below so you can go and check him out um you know he he's definitely and you know he's definitely going to be making it up the ladder in the in the lightweight division for sure and i'm excited to see what the future brings for you mike thank you so much yeah, yeah. awesome <laughs>